Beneath the clean mantle of the Greenland ice lies a hidden, dirty secret. An abandoned Cold War American military base 50 meters down. As the climate warms, the ice melts. A toxic legacy is set to be released. On the top of the world, below the surface of a giant ice cap, a city is buried. In 1959, the US military embarked on an extraordinary experiment, carving a base, Camp Century, out of solid ice. There's definitely been nothing like Camp Century since Camp Century. It's singularly unique. Plans for the camp had been developed months in advance. And what they the did is they just cut out trenches in the surface of the ice sheet that were about eight meters deep. And then they put some buildings in them, all, all the things they needed to live, living quarters, kitchen, chapel, theater, hospital, those sorts of things. And then they put roofs on the trenches and then let the snow cover it again. The next phase was to be the activation of the nuclear power plant. All of it heated by its own nuclear reactor, brought in on a sledge, as you do. And the entire place, housing up to 200 people on a year-round basis, was run by that nuclear power plant. And here they are, handling nuclear fuel elements, each containing 500 grams of radioactive uranium. Camp Century held up as an heroic conquest of the Arctic in the never-ending pursuit of scientific progress. Camp Century is first and foremost known as the site of the first deep ice core through to the bed of the Greenland ice sheet, which was really an amazing accomplishment. American news crews visited the base. Everybody knew about it, or thought they did. In the early years of the Cold War, America worried Greenland could face Soviet invasion. As Greenland is a part of Denmark, Washington and Copenhagen signed a deal in 1951 to build US bases across this vast island. But Camp Century's scientific research was also a cover story for Project Ice Worm. Up to 600 uh, firing stations uh, and, um, and nuclear missiles was, were planned. 3,000 kilometers of tunnels and spanning a large, a huge area, yes. That's incredible, 3,000 kilometers of tunnels. Yes, that's a, Was planned? Was planned, yes. And that was Ice Worm, the secret project? That was Project Ice Worm, yes. But Project Ice Worm had one big problem, the ice. This is the Bodan Glacier, and it leads up onto the vast inland ice shelf here. And that, of course, is where Camp Century was situated. Now, having put all that intricate infrastructure in place, this seems incredible, but it appears they hadn't factored in one simple thing. Ice moves. It moves in different places, different times, at different velocities, which is not exactly ideal when you're sighting missile tubes on a place like that. In fact, the ice was slowly crushing the room which housed Camp Century's nuclear reactor. They abandoned the place for, for several reasons. I think they found out that the ice uh, was moving uh, much more than they expected, uh, which meant that it was uh, more costly to have these tunnels uh, and to maintain the tunnels uh, under the ice. Now Greenland's ice sheet is melting at a rate we've never seen before it could expose Camp Century's abandoned toxic waste. Was that the idea? They just closed up shop and left? The idea when they closed Camp Century was that there would be perpetual snowfall forever that would entomb the base for eternity. But today, uh, through our monitoring program, we do observe melt uh, every summer now at Camp Century. And that is an issue stemming from today's climate and climate change. All right. <laughs> All right. That is Delta. That is Delta storm condition. In 2017, the government of Denmark started the Camp Century climate monitoring program. They mapped the debris with ice penetrating radar. And what's happening now is that as more and more meltwater is penetrating the ice cap, some of that meltwater will essentially reach the place in which Camp Century is now located, I think 50 or 70 meters below 
uh, the ice, and that melting water will mobilize some of the chemical uh, and uh, radioactive uh, waste that's down there. The radar has mapped the entire site, and we now know it's not just radioactive pollutants down there, there's also leaded diesel fuel, PCBs and other persistent pollutants. But that is far from the only toxic legacy. There are around 30 abandoned military sites left by the Americans. This was a former airfield, Bluey East 2. It took three days of travel to get here by helicopter and boat. We filmed for the first time just what the Americans have left here. Tens of thousands of diesel barrels lie rusting in a fjord. And it's not just the leaded diesel barrels. The Americans also left behind crumbling asbestos-ridden buildings, corroding metal trucks, and probably hundreds of cases of dynamite. Greenland's finance minister has long been worried about the mess, and he wrote a letter to the UN demanding the US or Denmark do something. The conclusions are uh, that uh, United States and Denmark um, uh, uh, should uh, recognize uh, the responsibility for, for the cleanup, uh, and I think it was uh, uh, a huge victory. But uh, we don't know how and when um, there has been any arrangements uh, with Denmark and how the responsibility is split between US and Denmark on this issue. Denmark has set aside over 3.6 million pounds to clean it up and it has started the initial phase here. But clearing Camp Century and other sites will be a lot more challenging and more expensive. The rate of Greenland's melt is frightening, but it's even more alarming for the people here exposed now to a landscape of toxic waste.